Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to the No Meds video. This is Dr. Bob D. Maria, as you know. I'm looking forward to today because we are going to recap everything that we talked about in 2015. It seems just like yesterday that we started this. Thank you for all of you that are going to watch me down the road on various venues on the internet. My goal is to make a difference in individuals' lives. And there's just so much to talk about. You know, we started the year off last January talking about the thyroid gland. And the thyroid gland is located right here in your body. It's a very important mass of tissue. The thyroid gland controls basically the metabolism in your body. And a lot of body signals that you're contending or dealing with have to do with the thyroid gland. Like, do you have cold hands and cold feet and wide spaced teeth? Did you wake up with a headache this morning? Do you have history of constipation or fatigue or depression or even high cholesterol? Those are body signals of subpar thyroid function. Now, we had a question already that somebody had asked me earlier is um, from Linda. You mentioned in the test for the thyroid that you should get T3 and T4 levels checked and T something, what is that? The other T something is TSH. TSH comes from your pituitary gland. It's thyroid stimulating hormone. Your pituitary gland is kind of like the maestro. I was recently at the Cleveland Orchestra and I was listening to a concert and the maestro's up there telling everybody what to do and over here the drum and over here something else is going on. Well, your pituitary gland is constantly sending out wands of information and one of them happens to be TSH. TSH is secreted from the thyroid or from the pituitary telling the thyroid what to do. Briefly, if your TSH is high, it tends to tell us you may have hypothyroid. TSH high, hypothyroid. Now listen, I'm going to share with you now. This is really interesting. If your TSH is low, typically they'll tell you, you have hyperthyroid. But what I have learned, if your TSH is low and your T4 is normal, you probably have a brain that's tired. Just saying, you know, because I know a lot of you people out there that are watching us right now are tired. So we're going to keep on moving because we have so many, we have 12 months to talk about. The second one happens to be with heart. We talked about heart during the month of February. The number one cause of death in America today happens to be heart health. Your heart goes loved up, not to insult your intelligence, but it does. Probably one of the biggest factors that we see with individuals is inflammation. I believe that inflammation is one of the leading causes of most of the individuals' health problems that we see in our practice. Many of you, most of you that are watching me right now are inflamed. People have been chasing the wrong reason for a heart. They've been saying that it's cholesterol, that it's from red meat, cheese, etc. I am not giving you a license to go and eat red meat, cheese, yogurt, and ice cream. You want to be really logical about this. But what I do know is that inflammation is one of the leading causes of heart challenges in our society today when it comes to heart health. So what causes inflammation? The leading cause of inflammation is sugar. That's the leading cause of inflammation. The second leading cause of inflammation, more than likely, is trans fat, what the medical community told everybody to consume 35, 40 years ago. So everybody was consuming vegetable oil and that trans fat or partially hydrogenated oils literally cause fire in the body. And I wrote a book on it that I released in 2005 called Dr. Bob's Trans Fat Survival Guide. And in that we talk about how your body, when you eat food and the food has to go through steps, and one of the final steps happens to be a fat called EPA, which is for heart health. There's another fat for your brain called DHA, which is for brain health, which is a whole other story in and itself with so much emotional trauma, depression, anxiety that people suffer with day to day. 
So if you want to minimize heart challenges, be aware of the inflammation in your body. You could do something as simple as the Dr. Bob squeeze the wrist test. You should be able to squeeze your wrist and you should literally see skin and bone. And I know that many of you watching me right now have very large wrists because you're inflamed. Or your body, if you look at my face, my face is thin in this area here. I know a lot of you have extra tissue. I was talking to someone just yesterday that she was looking at herself and she saw how puffy she was. Well, she's puffy because she's inflamed. What causes the inflammation? Well, gluten and fruit. And we'll talk about fruit here in a moment. So if you want to minimize heart problems, cut back on sugar, cut back on trans fats, and just be aware, and I'm going to tell you one other thing that I've learned along the way, there's so much that I've learned in nearly 40 years, is that when we have somebody come into our practice and they have low back challenges and we take a side view of their low back, there's a large blood vessel in the abdomen called the aorta. And what I've noticed with people who like to eat ice cream and yogurt is that they tend to have a calcified aorta. Well, if your aorta is calcified, that means the blood vessels in your brain are probably calcified with reduced blood flow also. So I don't eat ice cream. I don't eat yogurt. And if you really were wise, which I know you are because you've been watching me, you wouldn't eat it either. So I'm just trying to help make a difference. We had a, a month of March. We talked about MS. Now, we have helped MS patients in our practice. And I don't want to say MS is hard to help because we've helped a lot of people with MS. So what I usually look for in an individual with MS is I want to make sure that they have the right fat or oils in their body. And that's why we do something called the essential fatty acid blood spot test. And we can send this kit to anybody anywhere in the world because I know that thousands of you will watch this program when we repost it on various internet sites. So the essential fatty acid blood spot test would be a wise test to do it once a year, once every two years. It's very affordable. It costs just a couple hundred dollars, which is really nothing in the scope of you go to a healthcare facility and you have a heart challenge. You know, it costs almost $30,000 to have a defibrillator or, or a pacemaker placed inside of your body. So a sensor fatty acid blood spot test tells me the oil. And if you have too much omega-6 oil in your body, and you don't have enough omega-3 fats, you basically have raw nerves. Now, something else with MS that we see is that people have MS tend to have low vitamin D. You would be really wise if you haven't already to have your vitamin D3 tested once a year. Working with Anytime that you're in the winter season, you don't have sunshine, you should be taking vitamin D. I take vitamin D every day of my life. So I just want you to be aware of that. Vitamin D is really, really important for MS. MS is very common, especially in women. You may have low progesterone. Progesterone in the human body is low typically in individuals who have miscarriages, low thyroid, and individuals who have MS. It's just progesterone is a precursor for natural cortisone. So I'm just trying to give you some tips of the recap that we did this year. If you have somebody in your family has MS, they usually have stress, they usually have low oil, they don't have enough vitamin D. I'm going to talk about cholesterol for a moment. You know. Cholesterol is so misunderstood. So here's what I want you just to pay attention to what I'm saying to you right now. Cholesterol in the human body is like a fireman. Firemen go to fires. Firemen go to fires on fire trucks. That was simple but insignificant for my story. So if you're a fireman and you're going to go to a fire, you have to go on a fire truck that takes you to the fire. So the purpose of this conversation is, the trucks that take the firemen to the fire, for the purpose of my story, is called the LDL truck. So the LDL truck takes the firemen to the fire. So if you're a fireman and there's a fire out there, you're going to go to the fire on an LDL truck. So LDL truck goes to the fire. What do the firemen do? They put the fire out. I'm sure everybody understands that. So if there was a big fire and a lot of firemen, You'd be having a lot of fire trucks with a lot of firemen going to put the fire out. Now, firemen use water to put out fires. Within the human body, I want you to think of cortisol or cortisone 
that's produced by the adrenal gland that puts the fire out. So if you're a fireman and you're going to a fire, you're going to need cortisone. Cortisone takes away pain. Now I'm going to share a little thought with you. Sugar uses up cortisone. Your body, when you eat sugar, has to use the cortisone to process the sugar. Well, if you're busy eating sugar, you don't have enough cortisone to put the fire out in your body. And not only do you not have enough water to put the fire out, you have a lot of LDL trucks. So if you go to your healthcare provider and you just say, I haven't been feeling good, and he draws your blood and your LDL trucks are up, he's going to get concerned because you have high LDL. And they tell everybody when you have high LDL, you're going to have a heart attack. No, you're not going to have a heart attack. You need to get your hand out of the cookie jar. You need to start taking some oil. So when they give you a statin drug, the statin drug is tricking your body. So to go back to the story, so I'm going to have a graph here. Cholesterol is here. Cholesterol becomes something called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone becomes progesterone. Progesterone goes down to make cortisone or progesterone goes over here to balance out estrogen. But in the human body, if you run out of cortisone, your body needs to make cholesterol to make the pregnenolone, to make the progesterone, to take care of the cortisone production. So if you hear what I'm saying to you right now, sugar takes cortisone out of the body, sugar takes progesterone out of the body. If you run out of cortisone, your adrenal glands say, brain, I need to have some more uh, cortisol down here. So your brain will make cholesterol. So some of you have high cholesterol because you've been busy eating sugar. So if you really listen to what I'm saying to you right now, I just gave you the answer for a lot of questions. If you're eating sugar and you don't have enough progesterone, you have a greater chance to have a low thyroid. You have a greater chance to have a miscarriage. You have a greater chance to get MS. So if you have low cortisol, your body's going to make cholesterol. So if you go and you take, go to the medical doctor and get a prescription to lower your cholesterol, now you're going to have bad effects because you don't have enough cholesterol in your body to help make cortisone. So you're going to have a pain syndrome and you're going to have erectile dysfunction, optic strokes, and glaucoma. So you start looking at the whole picture of everything I'm trying to share with you. And you know I've been doing this since 1978. I started my training in 1974. So I've seen this happen. It's not going to go away. These are not Dr. Bob principles. These are natural rules. I did not make these up. So if you want to lower your cholesterol, stop the trans fat. Stress will also elevate your cholesterol because when you're under stress, your body's going to use the cholesterol up to help make more cortisone. So if you come into my practice, now listen to this here because this is also very significant. If you come into the practice and you have a problem with pain in your body and your cholesterol is elevated, I'm going to look at your triglycerides. If your triglycerides are elevated and your cholesterol is elevated, you've been eating too much sugar because sugar will go over to become a triglyceride. If your cholesterol is elevated and you have normal triglycerides, it's stress. I just want you to be aware of that. So a couple of rules. You're going to want to listen to this more than one time. Let's talk about Alzheimer's. How many of you out there want Alzheimer's? I'm not going to have Alzheimer's because I'm not consuming an inflammatory diet. Because see, I am telling you right now, this inflammation, you need to learn as much about inflammation that you possibly can. Because inflammation is the root of most people's health problems. So Alzheimer's, you know, it's, it's not necessarily aluminum. I'm not going to tell you that it is or is not these protein plaques. I know that there's been research out there that individuals that use what we call acid sopper drugs have a greater chance to have Alzheimer's and dementia. And the reason is they're not absorbing enough minerals in their body. You need to have minerals for your body to function optimally. But I also know that there are so many people today that have inflammation from sugar. And I don't want to be on this sugar bandwagon, but it's very significant. So when we... Um, have practice members, and I'm going to invite anyone of you watching me once again anywhere in the world right now. We do hair analysis to our practice members. You can take some hair from the back of your neck. We send it to a lab out in Arizona. 
and they give us results. I'm going to share a secret with you. You know, I'm glad you're paying attention to this tonight. What I have learned is when people have a hair analysis and their sodium and their potassium are low, that more than likely tells me they have adrenal fatigue. Well, people who have low sodium and potassium on the mineral tissue hair analysis tend to have high aluminum. <clears throat> I'll say that again. People who have low sodium and low potassium on their hair analysis tend to have high aluminum. People who have high aluminum, maybe or maybe not, but have Alzheimer's and dementia. People who are on Zantac, Prilosec, or any of these other medications that stop the absorption of minerals, hey, you're going to have a greater chance to have Alzheimer's and dementia. If you want to prevent Alzheimer's and dementia, don't eat sugar. Don't eat sugar at all because it causes inflammation in your body. I'm going to go back to the essential fatty acid blood spot test once again. You can write this down, EFA blood spot test. After I'm done with the program, do some search on a long chain fatty acid called DHA. DHA stands for Dicosa hexanoic acid. I talk about this in Dr. Bob's Trans Fat Survival Guide. And Dr. Bob's guide to stop ADHD in 18 days. If you don't have enough oil in your body, it affects your brain. Your brain's going to short circuit. I have people that come into the office right now, and I wasn't planning on talking about this, but you need to hear it. We have a young man that came into our office. He's divorced. His wife wants to take the kids. They say he's bipolar. So we looked at his essential fatty acid blood spot test, and he had the wrong oils in his body. He's trying, and he was eating an organic salad dressing. But that organic salad dressing had sunflower oil in it. Sunflower oil is an omega-6 fat. That omega-6 fat was causing inflammation in his brain. I had another lady came into my office, same thing. She was feeling pain, didn't feel good. She was kind of upset with, you know, us. And I just looked at her diet sheet, and here she was having sunflower butter every day. Instead of almond butter, she had sunflower butter. It caused inflammation in her body. Now, I'm not telling you to or not to eat sunflower butter or oil. But you don't want to be eating on a regular, consistent basis because it will cause inflammation in your body. Let's talk about men's health. Now, this has been a tremendous year for us because um, we've had favor with an app called Uversion. Uversion is a Bible-based app that you can get on a smartphone. Well, we have, through Dominic, my son, in Los Angeles, who has been very well with networking and part of our social media experience. So I have to thank him for the, all of what we've been doing this past year. He was able through contacts to submit Bible-based or health devotionals. So we have one that's out on men's health. We have one on female's health. And we have one on purification and cleansing. So if you have a smartphone right now, you can download the Uversion app for your smartphone, and I'd like you to go to plans. Depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching it um, right now, which is at the end of 2015, you can go to new plans. And right there is going to be the one on men's health, and it's going to be the one on purification and cleansing. If you're watching this anytime in the early part of 2016, just go to the word devotional and scroll down to the five day and you're going to see information on excellent, excellent programs that we did on men's health, women's health, and on purification. I have a question that says, what foods or vitamins would you suggest for cleansing the liver and how to make your thyroid healthy again? Well, that's two questions right there because your thyroid gland I would eat as much fresh vegetables that you can, and I would probably try to get some sea vegetables because you need iodine. I actually take an iodine tablet. The best way to help your liver is not to put toxins in your body, and you can eat a half a red apple every day, a third cup of beet fiber, and a medium carrot. Somebody wanted to know how to reverse the early stage of cataracts. We use a phosphorus capsule. It's called, it's a, it's a phosphorus capsule, super phosphorus caps. But we also have a tool in our office that is called an oximeter. And the oximeter itself tells me the amount of oxygen you have in your body. And your oxygen level should be at least 95 or greater.
What I wanted to show you right now is that this is what the U version app looks like. And this is the one on the top is clinical purification and cleansing. The one below in the middle is Dr. Bob's guide to, to men's health. And the one at the very bottom is the one on female health. So I would encourage you to look these up. It definitely has the potential to change your life. We've had people watch the videos thousands of times, just like some of you could be watching this right now. And our goal is to help make a difference in your life. So let's continue on because uh, let's talk briefly about men's health, okay? The biggest challenge that I see with men today is the fact that they have compromised liver function and you're being exposed to too much estrogen. By far, you know, if you watch me any length of time, this is probably one of my most favorite props. This is an oil filter. In the human body, the oil filter happens to be your liver. Your liver is probably one of the most um, overworked, under-understood glands or tissues or organs in the body. Most men, if they are regular golfers or working around in the yard or being exposed to estrogen, if you're eating food that is not organic, you're getting exposed to estrogen, the nemesis for men today is estrogen. Why do you think we watch and see these TV advertisements with them trying to peddle medications for men not to have erectile dysfunction? It's because they have too much estrogen and not enough testosterone. So we see more and more men that are in our practice today that are depressed, they don't have any energy, and they're exhausted at 40 years old. Listen, I'm gonna be 62 years old, and I have guys that are 40 years old that have less energy than I do because they've been focusing on eating the wrong food. This is very serious. And I just had somebody that I talked to, 54-year-old professional that had prostate cancer and prostate problems. You know, you just have to minimize the amount of estrogen that you're being exposed to. Another challenge that we've been seeing, and we talk about this a lot, is gluten. Let me talk to you about what gluten does. Gluten literally glues the little villi in your intestine. So in your intestine, you have these little villi. Villi are like little finger-like projections. So when you consume gluten, it's like gluing the little villi so they can't absorb minerals. Now, when I was in grade school, and back in 60, 61, 62, and 63, et cetera, we would have art on Friday afternoons at two o'clock. And the teacher would always have us bring white flour in, so we'd bring white flour and water and paper. And we would paper mache balloons. And we'd paint them and we'd do all kinds of silly things with paper mache. But the glue, the gluten in the flour is what allowed the paper to stick to the balloon. So if you happen to be a regular gluten consumer in rye, wheat, barley, and yes, in oat, you're going to have a greater chance to have digestive distress, sinus problems, and pain syndromes. I am just telling you, I've been working harder and harder to minimize gluten. I'm not totally gluten-free, but I don't eat gluten-free food, but I am really, really diligent. So we'll eat rice pasta instead of wheat pasta. So I just want you to be aware that gluten can create a lot of distress in your body and gluten can deplete the body of zinc. And how do you know if you have zinc? Because zinc, without it, you're gonna have white spots in your nails, you're gonna have large pores in your face, you're gonna have gray hair, and men can have prostate challenges if they don't have enough zinc. I'm going to talk about diabetes right now. They estimate that the children born between 2000 and 2010, by the year 2030, which is only 14 years away, by the way, very soon, 15, they are going to be, a third of them are going to be diabetics. Most diabetics are overweight, but not all overweight people are diabetics. People who have blood sugar distress What's happening to them, they're going to have a greater chance to have pain syndromes, and what happens to their nervous system, that their nervous system itself starts to falter, and they have poor circulation because of the nerve inflammation, and they start getting feelings and sensations going on in their feet or burning in their feet. People who are diabetics or pre-diabetics have more pain syndromes, 
and they use a lot of different medications that literally squeeze that pancreas to get every bat last drop of insulin out of it, and then all of a sudden, the pancreas stops working, and then you have to go on insulin. So if you want to minimize your potential to become a diabetic, you're going to have to get off sugar. Sugar creates distress. We use a product in our practice called CRZYME. CRZYME takes away the craving for sugar. You may consider having an HA1C. An HA1C is a blood test that tells us the amount of iron on a red blood cell, and it tells us gives us a, it tells us the amount of glucose on a red blood cell, and it's for the last 120 days. So it's a little bit pure way to find out how you're doing with your blood sugar. But what I just re learned recently, if you have hemochromatosis which is elevated iron, you have a greater chance to have an elevated HA1C. I'll say that again. If you look at what we call your CBC with your differential and your hemoglobin is elevated and your HA1C is elevated and you're a gentleman, chances are you could have hemochromatosis give you a false positive on your HA1C test. Now, you can look at your own blood sugar. Your blood sugar you want to be at 84. For every point that your blood sugar is above 84, it increases your potential to become a diabetic by 6%. If you don't want to be a diabetic, you want to move, you want to exercise, and you want to minimize sugar. Kidney. Kidney challenges are occurring today because most of you are not drinking enough water. You want to drink a minimum of a quart of water every day, preferably two quarts of water would definitely make a difference. Soda is the big nemesis when it comes to um, kidney distress and kidney stones. Now, I have one more I want to talk about is sleep. 50% of those of you that are middle age have sleep challenges. If you go to bed and your brain is tired and your body's tired but your brain's going 100 miles an hour, chances are you have too much copper and not enough zinc. If you go to bed at 10 o'clock and you wake up at one o'clock in the morning, you could have parasites. At least that's what we were learning. If you go to bed at 10 and you wake up at 11, it's a need for B vitamins. If you go to bed at 10 and you wake up at three, it could be blood sugar distress. If you go to bed at 10, wake up at 11, B vitamins. If you go to bed at 10 and you wake up at one, parasites. If you go to bed at 10 and wake up at three, it's blood sugar stress. Now, what I want to talk to you about is um, we have the three devotionals on you version, but we're looking twenty. We're looking forward to twenty sixteen. It's going to be a topic called one thing. We're going to be giving you tidbits of information every day, but we're going to have a focus every month, and we're going to have a quiz, and then we're going to have some live chit chat, and we're going to be answering these quizzes. And one of the very first areas we're going to speak on. In the month of uh, January, we're going to be talking about the thyroid gland. And every month, we're going to have a quiz for you to take so you can evaluate yourself and you can see exactly how your body is doing. I'd like you to pass this information on. Um, we really appreciate each and every one of you that have been watching us. So all of you that have been watching me live, I'd like you to stay online. because I have a couple other areas I'd like to talk to you about. All of you that have been watching me on the Internet, we appreciate you. We look forward to working with you, um, having consultations. Go to our website. We're here to make a difference for you, and we look forward to helping you in the new year. Now, for all of you that have been watching me live, I have a special gift for you because you've been watching me. So you're going to need to do this now. After I get done with this broadcast, I want you to send a note to customercare at druglessdoctor.com. Customercare at druglessdoctor.com. We're gonna send you this book. It's the one minute a day book to help. We can only send this to people that live in the continental United States. So if we have any neighbors and friends from Canada, anywhere else in the world. Unfortunately, we will not be able to send this to you. We're only going to be sending this to individuals that live in the continental United States. We appreciate each and every one of you. You send your name and your address to customercare 
at druglessdoctor.com. So you're going to want to do that right within the next little bit of time because we're going to be shutting this down. So we know that we have several of you that are on the line right now. I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas, very pleasant New Year. Thank you for supporting us and passing this information on. I'm Dr. Bob DiMaria, the Drugless Doctor.